What's up guys, that's GFX, aka Look here, and today we have episode 2 of A Cuber's Life. And today I'm very excited to announce that we have Cubix, aka Albert Yu, on with us. Thank you so much for him to come on, and you can find all his info below. But yeah, let's get on with the video. So today we have Cubix on with us. Cubix has a YouTube channel with 23,000 subscribers and if you aren't already subscribed there'll be a link in the description below and make sure to subscribe. He's been making videos for many 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 years and has over 300 videos. Started making them about 10 years ago which is absolutely insane. He's one of the first YouTube content creators in relation to cubing and to this day is still one of the largest. As well as us, he's been competing since 2011 with some very good times as well. So today we have a Cubix, aka Albert Yu, on with us. Welcome. Hello, thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. So Cubix, if you don't already know, um, has a YouTube with, I think if I remember rightly, about 20 something thousand subscribers. So yeah, it's, yep. Just hit 23,000. Yeah. And is an established member of the kind of community and has been for many, many years. Um, so just to kind of start off, what does a sort of typical week look like for you in regards to kind of work, school stuff and all that kind of? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because things are so different right now because of the pandemic. So I think yeah. these days um, it's very much like work for one hour, cube for 30 minutes, work for one hour, cube for 30 minutes until I'm tired. Yeah. Um, I think before when things were more normal and I had an actual work schedule, it was more, well, actually I wasn't really cubing back then. So it was literally work 16, 18 hours a day and then sleep. Um, so there was just not that much time for cubing. I think back when I was in school, it was more, I think it was like school, maybe 10, the school work for like 10 or 12 hours a day. And then I would cube for a couple hours a day. Um, so things have sort of changed over time. Um, I think moving forward, if we were to go back to work regularly, um, I would probably try to keep you know, maybe work eight to 10 hours a day and then, you know, cube a couple hours a day. Yeah. yeah Cause there's definitely so like kind of work life balance. Um... Yeah. 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 It was hard for me though, to, to find that balance before. Cause I think in grad school, there's just not that much time to do a lot of other stuff. And I had a lot of other hobbies too. So I yeah, for sure. did a lot of like rock climbing and biking and stuff like that. And so I think those hobbies sort of took precedence over cubing at the time. Um, so I think, after work, I just wanted to do something that was more physical than like sitting in a chair in a cube. Yeah. Um, so that that's sort of where my priorities were, but things are different now. Yeah, because I, I know personally, out, out of, coming out of like a 12, 14 hour day, the last thing that I would, I would want to do is sit down and kind of make my brain do more work. Exa exactly. I just want to do something totally different, yeah. like decompress. Yeah, for sure. So kind of how would you say that that's kind of change of the years? um or has it kind of stayed around about the same no it, it has changed a lot over the years I, when i first started cubing um that was like the only thing i ever wanted to do i mean obviously school was still a priority but i think i started cubing in like middle school and high school and like ah, school just wasn't really that hard so it's like you know you do whatever a couple hours of school work i mean you have the rest of the night to just cube and back then you know i was pretty like fat and out of shape <laughs> so like I, I didn't do any sports um so i, I literally would just cube for like five, six hours a day. Um, and I, I did that until I think like later into high school and college. Cause I, in high school, I actually started taking college classes at the University of Minnesota. Um, so I started having less time then. And then in college, I just, yeah, had less and less time uh, devoted to cubing. Yep. Yeah, just that kind of transition from high school to kind of further education. And then the yeah. realization that actually, no, I did not nearly have as much free time as I used to have. Yeah, I, I think that's common with a lot of cubers too. Like if you see like basically when people start cubing, when they peak and then sort of when they, when a lot of people stop cubing, like Felix is very rare, right? Like people like Felix and Mox, like it's it's incredibly rare to be cubing for this long and still be world class because I think the vast majority of people stop cubing, you know, when they get to college or when they start working um, just because life priorities change. Um, yeah. But yeah. For sure. Um, so kind of in regards to your practice, um, if we'll, we'll shoot back to kind of the start um, first. 
what did your kind of pra practice consist of? Was it kind of just drill solves over and over, or kind of what was yeah, it? yeah? So this is this is pretty crazy because when I started cubing, there weren't really any YouTubers. So so like I think the people I watched were like me, myself, and Pi, and Batman, Fisto, Pestvik, and Thrust. Um, and I, I'm sure I'm missing a couple others, but. Um, those are like the main channels, and I think of those, I think Bad Mephisto was the only one that really had any tutorials. And it wasn't really so much like how to practice kind of guides, it was more like, okay, these are some like F2L tricks or, you know, whatever. Um, and so for me, I didn't know any better, and so I think the only way that I practiced was just by doing solves over and over again. And that worked really well until I was like, I think probably sub-17. Like, I didn't really have to do anything different. Um, I got away with using Bad Owls, I think I was still using Two Look. Um, OLL um, at that point and it's like you know there was no pressure to to do anything different and also back then I think you know the average I, I would say sub 20 was like a good time this is in like 20 2010 or two no that's like 2009 so like sub 20 was a good time back then um, so yeah you know when I was averaging 17 seconds in like 2010 or something like that that was pretty good like I, I think that would have been almost top 100 in North America um, which is crazy to think now because uh, things are so different. But yeah, back then the only way that I practiced was just by doing solves over and over again. Um, I never dedicated sessions to you know cross only or like last layer outs or anything like that because it just wasn't necessary. Yeah, and I kind of feel like now because obviously YouTube um, and cubing on YouTube is so much bigger. You've got a massive part to play with that as well. Um, it's almost like you can't kind of get away from the kind of the video is showing you do this, do this, do this, and I feel like it's a lot more kind of techniques based rather than just straight practice. Um, well, yeah, I, I think. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, that, that's. I, I was just gonna say I, I think it's kind of interesting because um, I think people are taking an approach to cubing very similar as they do to like other sports now. Because like when you do, let's say you want to play soccer um, or football or something, like you, you wouldn't just play the game over and over again because that's yeah. it's fun and like somewhat productive but overall like you want to do drills and other things and i think people started realizing in cubing it's the same thing like you can't just keep solving over and over again if you want to get faster you actually have to focus on specific things and practice specific ways um so that you can practice more efficiently for sure so my next kind of question is kind of in relation to that um so if we kind of skip forward probably about now now that you're kind mm -hmm. of don't want to say it back into the community because you were never really out of it but like practice wise um, yeah what would you kind of say your practice consists of now is it still kind of the solving or would you say it's it's, it's hard i uh so right now i'm basically trying to do like a soft reset because i think over the years i've developed a lot of habits that work for me I, for getting sub 12 and stuff it's fine but um for example like my f2l is pretty inefficient um, but the reason I, I'm getting okay times on it is because, you know, there might be an eight move solution and I'm using a 12 move solution for some weird F12 case. Um, but because I'm so familiar with it, I've just been spamming TPS. Um, and so I've been getting by on that. But actually one thing I've noticed is that now that I'm, I'm a little bit older, my fingers are not quite as fast as they used to be. Um, so spamming TPS is not going to get me much further. So I, I've actually been focusing on doing a lot of different techniques that I've never done before, um, just for the sake of thinking about F2L specifically um, in a different way. So for example, I did um, pseudo slotting only for like a week. Um, and I found that, you know, there are situations where pseudo slotting is really useful. And then there are other situations where it's not. Um, I've also tried to do more color neutral salts just to look, again, just to think about F2L differently. Cause I think I've been so ingrained to thinking about F2L as finding a white corner, finding the corresponding edge, inserting it in a specific way that um, I just haven't really thought about what I've been doing. And then right now, actually, what I'm doing is only doing Rue Solve, so I, I'm not doing any CPOP anymore. Um, and I, I'm going to only do Rue until I'm sub-20. And the idea really is that I want to focus on the block building steps, because I think one thing that's very weak in my solves, for example, is building X crosses. I almost never go for it, just because it's hard for me to inspect. My hope is that by doing Rue and forcing myself to think about how the cube rotates in different ways and not constraining myself to having, for example, the centerpiece on the bottom, um, maybe I can do things more efficiently um, and I can build better X crosses. I might be able to find better F2L solutions, um, stuff like that. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So, kind of moving on from that, then 
I guess we've already established how your practice is kind of going into the future. Um, yeah. But so, would you see yourself then switching back to CFOP and then sticking with that, or do you maybe just main route? No, I I think I think if I were to commit and and just go with Rue, that's that's a lot of time that's going to be needed to get back to my to my normal times because yeah. I think with CFOP right now I'm averaging you know like mid tens high tens and so to to do that with Rue is going to take many many years um, so I I don't think that that's necessarily worth it but um, one thing that I think is useful is um, basically if I can figure out these different F two L cases. Um, it, with Rue, for example, if I'm using the M slice to build F2L pairs uh, differently than I would have done before, I can take that back to CFOP um, and I can do something that's a little bit more method neutral. Uh, so it's still CFOP, but it's, you know, it's inspired by other methods and I, I think it's good to think outside the box like that. For sure. Yeah. So my, my next question is more related to your YouTube. So kind of what, uh -huh. what was it that kind of kicked that off? Um, was it related to maybe not having a huge amount of content already kind of out there or kind of what were your... You, you mean the, the very beginning? Yeah, 2009? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I think, so YouTube started in like 2005 or something. And uh, I think when I started in 2009, I was in high school. Um, and I think the only popular cubing channel was actually, or popular Rubik's Cube video was um, like Dan Brown's like tutorial on how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And I thought that that tutorial was not really that great. And I, I've always wanted to make tutorials. That was like something that was just interesting to me. Not not necessarily for YouTube, but just in general. Like I, I like teaching and mentoring. And so I was like, hey, I can make a YouTube channel um, that basically is tutorial based. Um, and if my only competition is this one person who doesn't even really make Rubik's Cube videos anymore, then you know maybe I can maybe I can make something of it. Um, so that that's sort of what inspired it. Um, and it was very idealistic of me. I, I was thinking, oh, you know, there's no competition. I for sure will become very popular very quickly. And actually, the, I think the very first video I uploaded, it was like a 27 second single using like cubetimer.com or something. Uh, that video actually got a lot of views. I think um, within like, I want to say in like a month, they got a thousand views and I didn't promote it anywhere or anything. It was just, you know, there just weren't that many Rubik's Cube Salt videos. Um, and so it somehow actually, yeah, it got like a thousand views in a month. Um, and yeah, so I just kept making videos and eventually, um, yeah, got a couple followers and yeah, the rest is history. So when did, when did Cubic's friends and uh, come up? <laughs> yeah, that, it's, a, it's actually kind of a, I don't know, I, I, I kind of forget the history a little bit too. So I, I'll say the first thing that I did, I used to have like a very close group of Cuban friends uh, online. So this was before, I think this was before I even competed. My timeline might be a little bit wrong. I might have already competed by then. Um, but yeah, it was basically a bunch of people who I had never met before. Um, but it, they were just people I enjoyed talking to, so I was friends with them on Facebook. Um, and we decided to make a group, or I, actually I think I created the group. Uh, it was called Cubers United. I think that group is still alive. I'm no longer in that group. Um, but I, I think that group is, yeah, still alive and doing well. Uh, but that was a group that was literally just for my YouTube friends um, or like online friends. And I think like Colin Burns was one of the original members as well. Um, and then I forget like exactly why, but I, I decided to leave Cubers United because I think whatever, there's some like high school drama that happened. So, you know, I got upset. Um, and so I, so I left and I, I made Cubics as friends back then. It was spelled incorrectly. So it's just Cubics apostrophe friends. And uh, it was the same thing. I, I just invited I think like a few people, but I think they were specifically, I mean, they were, at, at first they were specifically YouTubers. So I think like Convinza and like Slater Metz, so Tell 5001 was in it. Um, and then I opened it up to people who wanted to join for Cubers United as well. Um, so then I think it was a group of maybe like 10 or 15 people. It was very, very small. Um, I mean, that's all I wanted. I just wanted like a really small group. Yeah. Um, at some point, I think we decided that it would be cool to actually just open it up to the public because back then I was still running my my Cubix Facebook page, which I no longer use. Um, but the reason that I just wanted to switch to the group was because I was actually interactive in the group. Like I was talking to my friends all the time in there anyway. Um, and I didn't really want to have to log into my Facebook page to interact with people additionally. So I was like, hey, I have this group. 
maybe people want to join and if they join they can talk to me um so i opened it up to the public and, and then i think you know a few hundred people joined and then i think someone complained that it was kind of annoying because their entire news feed on facebook was just cf uh, so then i think i set it to either unlisted or private or something um and so that sort of capped the growth and so now it's either invite only or you have to like have the link or something so it grows very slowly now because of that sounds like massive good <laughs> yeah so and there's like i think i think there's like 8400 members now i think at, at one point it was growing so fast that like the moderators just couldn't keep up which is why we set it to private and now there's like a few questions that you actually have to answer before you can join what I what I've found quite interesting is there's been a lot of new cubers that have come out. I'm not I'm not exactly a kind of old cuber. I started in about 2017, 2018, so I've not exactly mm -hmm. been cubing long. Um, but I know of like some relatively new cubers that kind of know you from CF, which I just find such a <laughs> interesting thing how it all comes kind of full circle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting too because a lot of people in CF don't even know who I am. <laughs> it's like you know they join a group and they never bother wondering like why the group is called that. They yeah. just sort of like take it for granted. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. But anyway, I don't think I've got any got any more questions. Um, okay. So thanks again. You can find all of the social media in the description below. Jump some love, and thanks again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It was really fun. See ya. See ya.